Today in our 2015 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Concha Prodigy P2 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90885. And to help us to get this installed, we're going to be using wiring kit ETBC7. This is what our brake controller looks like when it's installed. It's going to provide braking to your trailer. There's going to be a proportional brake controller, which means that the braking force on the trailer is going to match the deceleration on your vehicle. What that means is that your trailer and your car are going to slow down at the same rate, as opposed to the time delayed, where your car would slow down and your trailer may not slow down quite as fast. So that means your car would be slowing down the trailer also. So you can see, we have our brake controller connected. C on the screen shows that it's connected to the trailer. Here, we're gonna have a manual override button. It also allows you to see what your current power setting is which can be increased right here with this knob on the left to set the proper braking force for your trailer. So the button here on the right is gonna be the boost button. The heavier the load, you wanna go up and boost. So when the boost is off during braking, the power of the brake starts at zero and increase with deceleration. Now as we go up and boost, that will apply our brakes to our trailer more aggressively. This brake controller is also gonna provide safeguards, which means if you're at a long stop, it's gonna slowly decrease the amount of pressure on your trailer brakes. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get this installed. In your kit, you're gonna get the seven pole and the four pole. And you're also gonna get a small bracket. In order to mount this bracket and your wiring up to the hitch, you're also gonna need a long bracket, which is part number 18136. What we need to do is we need to remove the four pole here. We'll just pass it back over the hitch let it hang there. Now we're going to take our bracket and we're going to find a good place to mount it. I'm going to take my clamp. I'm going to pass it through the hole. Next we'll take our bracket that comes in our ETBC7 kit. We'll take a Phillips screwdriver. Tighten them up. Next we're going to take our wires and we're gonna feed them through this little slit in the small bracket. Then we'll take our included screws that come with this. And we're gonna put the same screws in the remaining three holes. Next, we'll take a flathead screwdriver. We'll tighten up all of our screws. And make sure you don't tighten these too tight so you don't break the We'll crack the plastic cover. Now I'm gonna take some of the included wire loom. I'm gonna wrap it over my wires. You wanna make sure you leave your blue and black hanging out of the bottom. We'll wrap up our wire loom with some electrical tape. I'm gonna take all my wires and I wanna feed them up through this hole. Now it's not necessary to run them through there. I just like cleaner look. If I can hide wires, I'm gonna do that. Take it, we'll push it back behind like this. And now we can tighten down our bracket. We use a flathead screwdriver. Once you get your bracket tightened and adjusted where you want it, you can cut off this access. We're just gonna take some tin snips and remove as much as we can. Now we'll take the dust cover off of our full pole now I'm going to take some dielectric grease and I'm going to put it inside the four pole coming off of our seven and four pole. It'll help keep them from corroding. So now we'll take our four pole from our vehicle and plug them together. Take a zip tie. The zip tie is going to help hold these together, keep them together so they don't come apart. Now our purple wire goes to reverse and the customer is not going to be using it at this time. So we're just going to tape up the ends. We'll take our purple wire we're just going to kind of roll it up like this. And we're going to take some electrical tape and we're going to tape around our four pole and the purple wire. Next, we're going to need to mount our ground wire. Now, because this is up behind the bumper and it's going to be hard to see with the camera, I pre-drilled a hole right here in the body. Before I put my ground wire in, I'm going to take some electrical tape and just go around this end here. Kind of help keep some of the water out of it 
you notice there's a bracket here, we're going to take this ground wire and I want to go up behind it. We'll take our included self-tapping screw. It's going to be the larger one that's in your kit. Now you just want that tight enough where it's going to hold it, not break your ring terminal or bend it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this excess wire, we're going to bundle it up together, and we'll just zip tie it to the back of the hitch. Next, we're going to splice the end of our wires. Now our kit does come with buck connectors, however, because it's going to be outside the vehicle, I'm going to be replacing them with heat shrink buck connectors, which you can find here at eTrailer.com. So you're going to uncrimp it, make sure you got a good connection. We'll do the same thing with the black. Next, we're going to take our jacketed wiring that comes in our kit. You're going to connect black to black and white to blue. Crimp it down and black to black. Next, we'll take a heat gun and we'll shrink these up. Now we'll take some electrical tape and cover our butt connectors. Next, we're going to run our wires up to the front of the vehicle. Let me get that done real quick and I'll show you how I did it. Now to run our wire, you want to stay away from any heat or any moving parts. So what I did is I ran along the underneath the trunk pan here. And you, if you're going to do that, you need to make sure it stays up there tight so it doesn't get caught on anything. So I zip tied it here. I went up over top of this bracket, over top of all of that. You look right here, came down behind the heat shield and went underneath this panel all the way up to here. From here, I went around and I zip tied to this hard line here. Now from the top, on my battery side, I took some airline tube, ran me a path through, away from heat and away from any moving parts. I took the other end that I need to go up to the top, put some electrical tape on it. Now we'll go up to the top and I'll pull it up and it'll follow that line. Now we can just pull our airline tube up. Now it'd be a good idea to double check down there once you get this pulled up to make sure you're not snagged on anything and you have all of your line. You're going to have a 40 amp and you're going to have a 20, 30 amp. The 40 amp is for your black wire that's coming out of the wires from the back. It's going straight to your seven pole and four pole. We need to find a place to mount this. As you can see right back in this area right back here, there's an edge. So what I did is I popped this off and I have just enough room to get my drill back in there to put my self-tapping screws in and mount this back here. Now you're going to see two prongs. On this, it's going to be marked battery and auxiliary. Battery is going to be the copper color. Auxiliary is going to be the silver color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the hole first. Next, what we need to do is we need to get our black wire out from inside of this coating. You just need to make sure you're careful when you're splitting the coating that you don't cut into the wires. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to route my black wire over to my breaker that's over here that we just mounted. So I'm going to come up behind all of this, these factory wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this fastener and these two fasteners. I'm going to run my wire underneath of this and underneath of this. Take a flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to pull up on that center pin. I'm going to do the same thing with these two. I'm going to lift up on this enough to get my wire underneath of it. Go ahead and put this fastener back in place. And route the rest of this right underneath this. Next what we're going to do is we're going to cut our power wire to the size we need to get it on our breaker. I'm going to take one of our smaller ring terminals Put it on. Now what I need to do is I'm going to take my extra wire. I need to run a wire from the battery to the copper post. Cut it to length. We'll take another small ring terminal, put it on one end. Make sure it's good. On the other end, you're going to put 
a large ring terminal. But you got a good connection to wrap them up with some electrical tape. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect this wire to the breaker. We're not gonna connect it to the battery yet. Our other one connected to the top post. Now this one's going back to our seven and four way that we mounted on the back of the vehicle. Now we'll snug up the nuts on there. We'll be using a 3 8 inch socket and you just want to snug these real, real tight because you don't want to crack the plastic coating on the top of the breaker. We can go ahead and put this back in place. Next we'll have our 3020 breaker. First I'll drill one of my holes. Next we're going to run a power wire from the copper side of our breaker around here to the positive side of our battery. Take some of our leftover black wire, splice the in. We're going to put our small ring terminal on. Now I'm going to route this the same way I did my other one. Then we'll cut off what we need. Do the same thing here. And we'll add a large ring terminal. Again, we're not going to connect any of these to the battery just yet. Now we can go ahead and put our panel back in place here and reinstall our push fasteners. Next thing we need to do is we need to take our white wire and we're going to have to run it inside to our brake controller. And we need to find a good place to go in and we want to look for a grommet. And the only one that I can see in this area is this bundle of wires right here. This is a rubber grommet. Let's go inside the vehicle and check out what's inside. So first we need to remove, there's a plastic panel right down here on the bottom. There's little clips that if you push in, and I'll show you how to work them here in just a second. If you look at these pins or these fasteners, all you would do is just push in on them and they'll release. And we're also gonna have a plug right here. And we can remove this. Now, up underneath the dash, there's a bundle of colored wires. That's the ground we're gonna go through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a good spot here. It doesn't feel like it has a lot of stuff behind it. I'm gonna put a little slice in it. What I wanna do with the screwdriver is I'm gonna poke it through and see if there's anything back there that I'm gonna hit. I think it looks pretty clear. It seems pretty clear. I'm not hitting anything. So now what we'll do is we'll take some airline tube. I'm gonna feed it through that hole. And here back inside the vehicle, you can see where my tube is coming through. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my white wire to the other end, and I'm gonna pull it through. So you can see we have plenty of extra wire here. And I know we're not gonna need this much to go right to the inside of the dash there. So, I'm gonna leave about four or five foot here. I'm gonna cut off the excess so we don't have to run that whole bunch of it through that hole. I'm gonna take these two together here and we'll push them through the grommet. Back inside under the dash, go ahead and pull the rest of our white wire through. Now we can take our wire loose from our airline tube. And this is the wire connection that's gonna be hooked into the back of our brake controller. Our blue wire is gonna to run to our white wire. The black wire is gonna be our power wire that's gonna run out to our breaker that we installed on the firewall. The white wire is gonna be our ground. And the red wire is gonna hook up to our brake light switch, which is just above our pedal. First, we need to test to figure out which one is our brake light wire. When doing that, you need to make sure that you're testing the one that comes on only when the brake pedal is compressed. When it's pressed, the light should come on. When you let off the brake, the light will go off. Now when you test it, you're gonna test this bundle of wires. And we have determined that it's gonna be the second one over here from the left. It's gonna be the brown with the white stripe. So now we're gonna to have to get another power wire that's gonna connect onto here through that grommet so we can connect it onto our breaker. Easiest way to do that is we're gonna take this wire that we've already pulled through, we're gonna pull it back through just a little bit, 
connect the wire from outside, and then pull this back through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my extra black wire, trim the end of it. We're gonna take a small ring terminal. Now we'll crimp it down. Make sure you got a good connection and wrap it up with some tape. And we're gonna connect this in right here. So now we can pull our white wire out just a little. And take our black wire, run some tape around it. And we'll go back in and pull them through. So now we'll find a good place to mount a brake controller. You want to make sure before you run any screws through, you don't have anything back behind here that you're going to hit any wires or anything like that. So we'll take one of our included screws. Sure, straight. Now we can put our other screw in. For our remaining wires, the plug's going to sit about right there. We'll cut this off right to the back of the dash. Put on one of our plug connectors. We're going to take our blue wire and we're going to put it in the other end. Our black wire, cut it the same. Now we'll take our small ring terminal, crimp it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get inside of here and find a good place to ground. First I need to pull up my threshold in order to get my kick panel out of the way. And you can use a screwdriver to remove that. I'm just going to use a trim panel tool. and connect my plug to it. We can see how much I have. Now we'll take our self-tapping screw. I'm gonna find a good piece of the body to ground to. Now we can put our kick panel back in place. Put our threshold back in place. Now I'm gonna take my extra wiring, kind of bundle it up, and I'm gonna find a place to zip tie it up underneath the dash. So now we can put our bottom panel back in place. We don't want to forget our plug that we took off over here. Now we got this back in place, go ahead and make our connections to the battery. We're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket. We'll take off this nut right here on the top. Take our two ring terminals, put them in place, and then put our nut back in place. Now that we've made all of our connections, we'll test it out. Now you can see here, we have power to our brake controller. Now we'll go back to the plug in the back, and we'll test everything out and make sure we're getting power back there. Brakes, left, right, running lights, and that'll do it for the Takancha Prodigy P2 trailer brake controller, part number 90885, and the ETBC7 on our 2015 Subaru Outback Wagon.